Many years ago, a young boy named Oliver Twist lived in London. The city was filthy because new factories and machines were being built every day, spewing out smoke and oil. He had no mother or father, so he lived in an orphanage until he was old enough to work. Then, every day, he would be sent with the other boys to toil in one of the factories, sewing buttons onto shirts and polishing machinery. They didn't get paid any money, and they never got a day off. But nobody would stand up for them because they didn't have families of their own. Oliver and all the boys were very miserable. They were fed one meal a day, a tiny bowl of thin porridge called gruel. The gruel was watery and tasted horrible, but it was the only food that they were allowed to eat. One day, Oliver was so hungry that he decided to ask the cook for more food. Please, sir, he said, trembling. I want some more. More? cried the cook. We feed all of you boys every day, and you ask for more? You ungrateful rat. If we're not good enough for you, you can go and live somewhere else. The cook grabbed Oliver by the ear, dragged him outside, and locked the door. Oliver was alone on the streets. He wandered around between the sooty houses, scavenging through the bins for scraps of food. He slept among the rats at night. He felt even more miserable than before because now he was alone. Even the factory was better than this. After he had been living on the streets for a few days, he met a very scruffy young boy. Hello there, said the boy. You look hungry. Would you like to come with me to find some food? Oliver was a little bit scared of the boy, but he had nothing else to do and nowhere else to go, so he decided to follow him. They call me the Artful Dodger, said the boy. I live in a house with lots of other boys, and we all get to play on the streets all day together. We get fed, and we have good fun. The Artful Dodger led Oliver down an alley and through an old wooden door. Inside it was just as he had said, rows of beds filled with other grubby little boys, all shouting and playing. The artful Dodger introduced Oliver to Fagin, the old man who looked after all the boys. He was tall and thin and had a sinister, toothless smile. We'll look after you here, boy, he grinned, as long as you pay your way. The next day, the artful Dodger took Oliver out onto the streets. I'm going to show you how we play, he said. He snuck up behind a man who was walking along the pavement, wearing a nicely tailored suit and carrying a pocket watch. With a swift movement, the artful Dodger put his hand into the back pocket of the man and pulled out a wad of money. He ran back to Oliver laughing and fanning himself with the money. See? he said. Now we give this to Fagin, and he lets us stay. Oliver felt very uneasy. Hadn't the artful Dodger just stolen from that man? You have a go, said the artful Dodger, pushing Oliver into the throng of people. Oliver looked very unsure and didn't know what to do. The Dodger sighed and said, Look, I'll show you again. He snuck up behind a different man and this time whipped a pretty silk handkerchief out of his pocket. He grinned and ran back to Oliver, stuffing the handkerchief into his hand. The man with the handkerchief had felt it slide from his trousers and turned around angrily. You boy, you stole my handkerchief. He bellowed at Oliver. Oliver and the Dodger turned to run but there was a policeman standing right behind them. 
Seeing the handkerchief in Oliver's hand, the policeman grabbed him by the ear. The artful dodger managed to slip away, but Oliver was in big trouble. The policeman took Oliver to jail, where he stayed for a few days in a gloomy cell, eating nothing but gruel again. The time came for Oliver to go to trial, so he was put into handcuffs and taken to a courtroom with a judge and jury. You are accused of stealing this man's handkerchief, said the judge. How do you plead? It wasn't me. I've never stolen anything, cried Oliver. You are just a street urchin with no mother or father to care about you, said the judge. You are most certainly a thief. Oliver wept. Suddenly, a man stood up in the courtroom. This young man is innocent, he shouted. The judge and the jury were very surprised. How could he be innocent? the judge asked. I am a bookseller, and this theft happened right in front of my shop, the man said. I see street urchins stealing things every day. I have never seen this young boy before, and on this occasion he did not take the handkerchief. Another boy, who I often see picking pockets, took it and placed it into this boy's hand. The jury gasped. The bookseller was a well-respected member of the city, and they knew he would be telling the truth. Oliver was free to go. He wept with joy as he was released from his handcuffs and ran happily out into the sunshine. Standing outside the courtroom, he suddenly realized he was alone again with nowhere to go. He didn't want to go back to Fagin and those thieving boys. He was frightened of getting into more trouble, and he certainly didn't want to steal from people. He sat down on the steps, feeling very alone. The bookseller saw him looking so unhappy and went to sit beside him on the steps. Where will you go, boy? he asked. Oliver began to cry and told the bookseller he had nowhere to live. Well, said the bookseller, you seem like a good little fellow. I've been looking for someone to help me with my bookshop. I'll pay you a few coins each day and you can stay with my wife and me. We don't have any children and I'm sure she would like to help you. What do you say? Oliver was overjoyed. He took the bookseller's hand, and together they went back to the bookshop. Oliver had stayed honest, and now he would be repaid for his good heart with some luck. He lived happily with the bookseller and his wife, helping him to stack and dust the shelves. But he hadn't seen the last of Fagin and the Artful Dodger.